Aloha friends, I'm going to show you how to make carnivore chips that are going to blow your mind. There are only two ingredients. But before I do, I want to tell you, my name is Maria Emmerich. I'm a nutritionist who specializes in the ketogenic diet and I've been helping people transform their lives for over 20 years eating delicious things like chips. Come check it out. Okay, so for the things that you need, it's two ingredients. That's all I used. Chicken breasts. And I use Redmond, uh, their smoke salt. They do a smoke salt I help them create and it's absolutely amazing. I've always liked smoked deli meat anyway. Um, you could use something different like their seasoned salt or just plain salt, but their smoke salt is just salt that's been smoked. So it's totally carnivore if you are carnivore, which is awesome. And then you're gonna want, this is a meat press. Um, a meat press, I think it was like $29 on Amazon. I'll have the link below. It's totally worth it. I have a large pot of water boiling or coming to a boil and you want a thermometer because you want to cook it to 155 and that's when you know it's going to be done. I'm going to cook it for about an hour in that water. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up chicken and I'm going to put it into a blender. You want a blender or a food processor. Either one works. So I'm just gonna just start cutting it up into smaller chunks and then toss it into my blender. And I'm gonna do this in two batches, otherwise I'll overfill the blender. Most likely you want two and a half pounds of uh, chicken per one tablespoon of salt. So if you only have two pounds of chicken, maybe three fourths of a tablespoon of salt. Um, so we're gonna toss that on in there. And I'm like dead serious when I say this is better than any store-bought deli chicken. And what is going on? Why do they have to add all this starch to it? I don't get it. Does it make it last longer? I don't know, I suppose. Oh, be aware. Make sure that, that you either eat this up uh, within a few days or freeze it because it's not like the store-bought stuff that will last for a long time in there. But I have to thank my friend Aubrey. Aubrey I met on my Greece trip. She came to my keto trip to Greece this past September. And we made such good friends. They came to visit us in Maui, her and Vito. And we were just talking about deli meat. She's like, I'm gonna make my own. And so then we were on this huge like texting thing, like talking about making our own homemade deli meat. And she's just like, yeah, it takes a little bit of work, but it is so good and so thank you Aubrey for bringing this to my attention my dog's at my foot asking for scraps you don't want this Bella's chicken she does like chicken though all right so now that this is in there I'll do a half a tablespoon of the smoked salt in there oh, I shouldn't put that on there where is my tablespoon I'm gonna have to use a regular spoon half a tablespoon of that and then we're gonna puree that up okay so here's the blender I'm not in love with this kitchen it's really small that's why I have to cut it's not like my home kitchen but anyway blender and you're gonna puree that up mm. It's gonna be all ground up. I can show you. It's going to be <clears throat> like this. Um, so that's what it's like. It's kind of like a chicken puree. It's not ground chicken, it's more of a puree. And I'm gonna repeat that with the next batch. Okay, so we have our meat press, our ground chicken, and I even have some finish that I made the other day. And we have some sub bread over here to make a sub. But I'm going to place all of this into the meat press. Keep pressing it down, otherwise you'll have little holes, which is fine. But there we go. And it's 
kind of hard to get the top on. If you fill it all the way, I might have to take a little bit out. So once we have that, we have, oh, where'd it go? It's in the, this. And so here's the top and you just kind of thread it through these three holes on the bottom like that. And then you know, press that on the top. And here's the actual top and it will seal down, but you have to really get your back into it. Come on. Ugh. There we go. Come on. <laughs> Craig, I might need your help. There. It's kind of sealed. <laughs> I'm going to fix that and put it in the water. So once the water's boiling and you have your meat filler, meat press filled, what should I call it? You're going to put that in the water. And it doesn't have to go over it. Um, I was worried it wasn't going to cook it, but it totally cooked it. And you're going to let the water boil, simmer on a low boil for, it's going to take about an hour. Uh, it depends on how fast it's going to cook. Mine took an hour. Um, this is why you want the meat thermometer because you want to make sure it's cooked and we're going to make sure it's totally cooked through after an hour. So we'll come back in a little bit. Now in the middle of boiling you might lose a lot of water and I don't think it has to be all the way up but I'm just doing this just in case to have it uh, make sure to cook everything. It does not have to go over it, just to be clear, but I'm gonna fill, keep the water full. Okay, so once it simmers for an hour, you're gonna remove it from the water, or like remove the heat, and you're gonna open it up, and you wanna turn your thermometer on, and you will test the temperature and bring it to 150 degrees. And sure enough, we have that. So I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put this in the fridge for at least 10 hours or overnight. But you want to make sure that it's in there for at least 10 hours. Okay, my friends, it's been 10 hours and we have the chilled deli meat in there and I'm just going to take a knife and kind of rim the top to get it out. They give you plastic bags but never cook things in plastic people. And whoop, there we go, our deli meat. And if you have a meat slicer, you can slice it thin. My meat slicer didn't come yet, so I'll grab a knife. Let's, uh, Wish I had it, shoot. But check it out, deli meat. Oh, perfect. Deli meat, you could make a sandwich with my protein sparing bread and you have a delicious lunch packed with protein in no time. Oh my gosh, my friends, look what just came, my meat slicer. So you can slice it with a knife. I showed you how to do that. Or you can get one of these babies and it was on sale for $99. If you're like me and you cook a lot, it's all good. So it is a little bit thicker than I'd want, Craig, but it's all right. I suggest it. You make it thinner? Yep. Yeah, see how thick this is? Oh, a little okay, thinner. So don't push on it. I'm not. There you go. Okay, so we made it a little thinner. And now, yeah. oh yeah, oh, this is awesome. Look at that, it's perfect. So I'm going to keep doing this, but then I'm going to make a protein sparing bread sandwich with the sub sandwich. Check it out in a minute. Okay, my friends, if you want your mind really blown, do you know what I'm doing now? 
I'm making it into chips, protein chips. Um, the boys are watching Black Panther 2 in the other room. Um, I, it's just way too much fighting for me. Um, so I'm doing this. And you're going to have your oven on at like 150 degrees or as low as it can go. And you basically dehydrate them into chips. So um, just get as many trays as you can and load it up because you are going to love these flavorful chips. Super, super good. I've done it with like store-bought deli meat. And here's the thing, if it's too thick or they're not the same thickness, some will dry and get crispy and some will be chewy. So you want to make sure these are nice and thin, the ones that you make. And it's gonna take a few hours, but it's a low temperature and you can heat up the house while you're doing it, right? Uh, not that we need more heat here in Hawaii, but that's what you're going to do and make chips and make like a super delicious dip. So here the oven is on at 150 degrees and we're about halfway there. They're going to shrink up a lot and get really crispy. And then we'll make a dip for them. This will take a couple hours. Ta-da! They are finished. So now you have a really thin chip. Super delicious. And I'm going to make a quick ranch dressing or ranch dip to go with it. So I have four ounces of softened cream cheese. And most of you probably know this, but always loosen the cream cheese. Because if you just start adding your liquid, you're going to get clumps. So loosen that up. If you haven't made my ranch, you're in for a very special treat. This is better than any store-bought ranch. And if you're dairy-free, you could use a uh, homemade bale instead of the cream cheese. Or you could use Kite Hill cream cheese, that would work. So now that it's loosened, I'm going to add beef broth and some pickle juice. And this will thicken up a lot, so it might be thin in the beginning, but it will thicken overnight. And then what I'm going to add is I have Flavor God Ranch seasoning. I like Flavor God, it's great. I'm gonna add some of that seasoning on in there, and then you just add it to your desired taste. And this is what we are going to dip our chips into. See how easy this ranch was? It's pretty mind blowing. But stock up on Flavor God and use code Maria to save. Aloha Kai. Hi. Were we just at the beach? Yeah. And I brought you up because I want you to taste test one of my homemade protein Dally. chips. So why don't you try this one and dip, well, you can, you can dip it oh, yeah. into the, to the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> you probably like the ranch. You yeah. don't be afraid of it. Frozen. You're going to double dip? Oh, now it's your dip. It's not on the same side. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty good, huh? I was dipping earlier. What do you think? Really good. Really good, crunchy. Mm -hmm. Fil filled with flavor too, right? Yeah. So, do you think that we should serve this at a restaurant? Totally. Yeah. Should we have a keto restaurant? Are you going to be the server or the chef? I'm probably going to be the server. The server? <laughs> I think you'd be a good chef. So what do you want to tell people? Cook with your kids. Cook with your kids and please share this video with your friends to show them just how delicious healthy eating can be. How do you think about that ranch? Isn't that good? Yeah. Mm. Mahalo, everybody. Bye. If you want to change your life, like I've changed mine with food, I would be honored to help you. Many of you don't know that I was twice my size. I had acid reflux. I had PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. I had depression. I had IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome and food changed my life. And not only did that happen, I get to eat good food, right? Good food. So if you wanna eat good food, 
have perfected meal plans made by me and personal help with supplements or modifications if you have Hashimoto's, if you have uh, Graves, if you have IBS, if you have PCOS, contact me. I would be honored to help you. Um, you can go to keto-adapted.com and find a lot of different options there for personalized help or message me uh, by commenting below on this YouTube video or you can check me out at mariamindbodyhealth.com. Mahalo.